So someone wanted to know about syphilis testing, or a friend, of course. And there are two types of syphilis testing, the treponemal tests, and the organism is treponemal pallidum, and the non-treponemal tests, treponemal and non-treponemal tests. And they're easy to tell apart because the treponemal tests have a T in them, and the non-treponemal tests don't have a T. <laughs> So the no-T tests are the rapid plasma reagent test, RPR, no-T, and the venereal disease research laboratory test, no-T. The treponemal tests have a T, fluorescent treponemal antibody test, the microhemagglutination for treponemal pallidum, the syphilis treponemal pallidum, IgG, and the treponemal pallidum plasma agglutination test. These are all T tests. So the treponemal test and the non-treponemal tests are necessary because the treponemal test tells you whether you have antibody response against syphilis. RPR and VODRL are non-treponemal tests, but they tell us about activity of disease. And so you need both of these tests because syphilis has stages, first stage, secondary syphilis, and tertiary, and it can go latent at any point, either early latent or late latent. And in the late stages, like when it comes to me, the tests might go negative. So if you have both a treponemal test and a non-treponemal test negative, what that means is you don't have syphilis. If you have a treponemal test that is positive and a non-treponemal test that is positive, you have syphilis and it's active and you have to be treated. And so in the primary phase, that's the chancre. We cannot use any of this because there's no antibody response yet. So you have to use dark field microscopy on the chancre. But then after about six weeks, the, the test will go up. And so both the treponemal tests and the non-treponemal tests go up. But the problem is, after the secondary stage, the treponemal test might go down, and that might make a false negative. And if you treat, treat right here, it'll go down, or fold in the first year. So you need this non-treponemal test to gauge activity of disease and effectiveness of therapy. Once the treponemal test is positive, it stays positive for life, regardless of whether you've had treatment or not. So we can use the treponemal test to tell if someone has syphilis or they had syphilis, but in order to de de determine whether it's active, you need the non-treponemal test, RPR or VDR. And so the super dangerous ones are not these ones. These are easy, both positive, both negative, so easy. The hard ones are, what if the treponemal test is negative, but the non-treponemal test is positive? The treponemal test is a better test. So then we would just repeat another treponemal test. And so if I have two treponemal tests negative and one non-treponemal test positive, we're going to go with the majority. The treponemal tests are treponemal, and therefore they have better sensitivity and specificity. And we're just going to ignore the minority report. That is a false positive non-treponemal test. How about if the treponemal test is positive, but the non-treponemal test is negative? Again, the treponemal test is a better test than the non-treponemal. So then we're going to repeat the treponemal test. So what if I have two treponemal tests positive? Well, that's a true positive. And so now you're wondering, is this a true negative or this is a false negative? This treponemal test positive with a non-treponemal test negative could be a true negative. It's truly negative because you received penicillin treatment and that made the non-treponemal test go down, but the treponemal test stays positive for life. So they need to produce a piece of paper right here that says, I received penicillin and that's why I have a positive treponemal test, but a negative non-treponemal test. The alternative is that that is a false negative. And that happens in tertiary syphilis, no treatment, and the RPR still went down. And there's a number of reasons why that could occur, but one of the reasons is the test is messed up. So if you have too much antigen or too much antibody, you won't get agglutination on the RPR. And that is the prozone effect. So in order for us to see, see the test result, we have to have agglutination. So the immunoglobulin has to bind onto the antigen and then clump together so that we can see it. But if we have too much antigen, it'll block the sites. And so even though there's a ton of syphilis in there, they won't agglutinate together and we won't be able to see a positive test. 
The opposite can occur too, where you have too much antibody and not enough to agglutinate. So both too much antibody, antibody excess, and too much antigen, antigen excess, can cause a false negative on the non-treponemal test. And so you need to know whether you had a treponemal or a non-treponemal test that was positive. You actually need both. And so the question was asked, how could you have a positive treponemal test and a negative non-treponemal test? Well, that could be a false negative or a true negative. It could be a false positive or, or a true positive. The only way to adjudicate it is to have that piece of paper that showed you got penicillin and repeat another treponemal test. If two of the three tests are positive, go with that.